pilot to help you troubleshoot your Hulda Clark Sapper kit. If you've been building this, having a few problems, there's a few different things that could go wrong. So check it out. I'd like to troubleshoot a few things that can be going wrong with the uh, breadboard kit. If you're building a Hulda Clark Sapper kit and the light's not lighting up, you may have a few common problems. The 555 CMOS timer can burn out if you give it an, a static shock. So if you're walking across the carpet, especially if you're holding the copper handles, the static shock could go right into the CMOS timer. And uh, you also have to make sure that when you do put this in on the breadboard, that you're aware of where the little circle is. So the instruction sheet tells you where pin one and pin one has a little dot that's imprinted right in the plastic so that has to be in the proper place here's a nice blow up of the 555 CMOS timer you can see the small circle in the top left it's imprinted in the plastic of the CMOS timer and that that top circle marks pin one you can see that the pins are marked in this illustration and so you have to have your CMOS timer in correctly so that your pins are hooked up to the correct parts. So you might have to flip your CMOS timer around if you have it in upside down. And really the only other thing that can go wrong is the, the LED. If the LED is not lighting up, it could be that it's in wrong. So I'll show you what I mean by that. I'll turn the zapper on. And here mine's light, lit up, but if I was to switch this just flipping it around, it's not going to work. It's not going to light up this way. So I get nothing if the negative and the positive ends are in the wrong place. So sometimes all you have to do is take it out and flip it to where it belongs, and it'll fix your problem. The only other thing I can think of is when you first get your parts, they're very long, the, the wires are long like this, and they're all wobbling around, and they can touch each other by mistake and short out your circuit. So it's best to clip them about a centimeter, each one of them, and then when they push into the grid, they're flush to the surface of the breadboard. So I have all my parts, it's, they just push right down and they're, and they're not, there's no wobble, and they don't uh, cross over each other, like something long like this. So those are the things that can go wrong that are the easiest things to go wrong, is that you might have the CMOS timer may have burned out, or it may be in upside down. It's really, it's actually very hard to see the little plastic circle that's on the top that designates pin one. So you have to hold it in the light, until you see that little imprinted circle and then you know that that's pin one and then just make sure you have this in the proper place according to the instructions and then flip your LED if it's not lighting up if your LED is not lit something's wrong and it might be just because you've got it in wrong so just take it out flip the ends put it back in and hopefully that'll fix your problem so those are the things that can go wrong that are the most common problems when you're building a kit. So I hope that helps some of you with your build. So, once you've gotten your zapper working, and you got your little red LED lit up, it's always good to test it with a hertz meter. And uh, I get this at Radio Shack. It's a multimeter with HZ, an HZ setting. And uh, you can see that that's reading zero on there. So let's see what we can do. I take my Hertz meter, it comes with a couple wires. I'm going to connect the black to this ground here. And then I'm going to attach the red positive to the positive output. Now this is reading almost 30 kilohertz, 
it's 29.77 or so, so that's a good reading. You want it to be between like uh, about 25 and 35. So 30 is perfectly in the middle, so that's where you want it to be putting out. So that's what uh, I use the multimeter to make sure that I've got a output. And uh, so that's how you test it. You just need a multimeter with the HZ setting and uh, and that'll do the trick. So here you can see that. So I've got a reading of 29 kilohertz. That's pretty close to 30. That's close enough. Has to be anywhere. A uh, zapper, Helder Clark defines a zapper from anywhere from 10 hertz to 500,000 hertz. And she chose 30 because it was the most comfortable to zap at. You, you really don't feel a thing. Lower frequencies you would feel. So if you were to zap at like 1,000 hertz or something like that, you would feel the tingle, and some people find that very uncomfortable. So that's how you, you just test it. You just hook red up to the positive, black up to the ground, and your hertz meter will let you know if your zapper is working or not. And that's all it takes. Make sure and visit ClarkZapper.net. We have videos to build a Helda Clark Zapper, the zap plate, we've got instructions for the food zapicator, toothbrush zapicator, and uh, we even have uh, all the schematics for building a 30 and a 1000 hertz. So you got the 30,000 hertz and the 1000 hertz schematics. So we have a lot of resources for anyone who needs to build a zapper right at clarkzapper.net. Thanks a lot.